praise team for coming forward. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Yes, he is. Amen. We're going to go ahead and continue with our worship through giving. He tells us in his word to honor him with his substance and to honor him with the first fruit of our increase. He also tells us that if we would give prayerfully, we will reach prayer. Amen. Let us come forth.
son-in-law. We came for graduation last night for my niece and um, decided to spend Mother's Day here with all you. She's our hanging right here. 
<laughs> not just Johnny and Angela, she, she's I am too. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. I want to say happy, uh, wish uh, happy birthday to Derek and my brother Benny. Amen. And also want to welcome all the visitors. Amen. Amen. All the visitors. Minister of Youth Persistent. Amen. And again, Minister of Youth Persistent. Amen. And her brother in law and her nephew. Amen. Amen. And my, my lovely, beautiful sister. That's my baby. That's my baby sister. My daddy called her head. He had a nickname for each and every one of them. Amen. I ain't going to tell you what my name is. <laughs> So it, it gets to me this time of year because I know how much my mother loved me. And I knew it was it was my mother that taught me the things of Jesus Christ. Yes. You see, my mother drug us to church. You know, we got too many parents nowadays that ain't dragging their children to church. Yes. Your children need to be in the church to receive the truth, the word of God. Yes. Because the world is going to give them everything that they want in school, in college, or wherever the place may be. But they need the word of God. Amen. 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 And my mother, and I say I was, and I was the bad out of the three. <laughs> I was the bad, but my mother brought us to church. My mother always, she always made sure that we knew Christ. Amen. We knew Christ. And I thank God for my mother. I thank God for my mother. Amen. Because it was for her. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even know Christ. Yeah. And that's just the truth of the matter. And I thank God that she drugged us, my siblings and I, to church. Mm -hmm. So we'll know about a man. Yes. Yes. That can heal the sick. That can raise the dead. That can make the blind see. Yes. And the yes. deaf to hear. Yes. And she can heal me of cancer for 20 years. Yes. I know Jesus. And I know things he lives today. Amen, somebody. Yes. And I thank God for it. Thank God for it. Because he loved me before I could even love myself. Amen. 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 And as we turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 15, and I promise you I'm going to keep you on. Matthew chapter 15. <coughs> I'm going to be reading verses 21 through 28. I must be honest with y'all, this is one of my favorite, favorite, uh, favorite scriptures in the Bible. Amen. One of the favorite. I got many, but this is one I really love. Amen. So Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Yes, mothers are always right, though. <laughs> Charity. Amen. So as you turn your Bibles there, would everybody please stand and join us in singing. Hey, 
anybody do you like Jesus? The word of God says, starting at verse 21, in Matthew chapter 15, that Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a demon. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs, hear up now, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Yes, yes. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. You may be seen. The grass withers and the flower fades away. Amen. But the word of God will last forever. Amen. I want to preach on the topic the faith of a mother. Yes, yes. The faith of a mother. Mm -hmm. In the text before us, we find a woman, a mother, who has a problem. And the Bible tells us that her daughter was vexed by a demon. Now it doesn't tell us why it happened. It does not say whose fault it was. Whether the mother had done something wrong or whether the little girl dabbled in something herself. All we do know is that the daughter was now demon possessed. And I want to suggest to you this morning that it's not really important whose fault it is. You see, when you are in trouble, it does not matter whose fault it really was. Yes, yes. If you find yourself broke, busted, and disgusted, you don't need somebody telling you, I told you to manage your money better. If you're beaten, bruised, and abused, you don't need somebody telling you everything will be all right. If you're depressed, dejected, and rejected, you don't need the pew, the pew psychologist or the pew counselor to tell you what they think. All you really want to know is where to get some help. You see, church, dying people, broke people, hurt people, used and abused people don't need the Monday morning quarterbacks. They need someone to tell them where they can go get some help. Amen. Now, some believe that demon possession does not exist today. Mm -hmm. But let me suggest to you that if you have a heart that is full of pride, mm -hmm. a lying tongue, committing murder by the words that come from your mouth, mm -hmm. or you're killing people spiritually, psychologically, and mentally, if you are plot evil, spreading lies, rumors, and gossip, if you are someone who is praying on the week for your cause and sowing this hope, if it's all about you and nobody else, I'm here to tell you this morning that those things are the traits of Satan himself. Yeah. And you may be demon-possessed. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, picture this mother's situation with me this morning as I preach on the topic the faith of a mother. Imagine that you carried this child in months, went through the labor pains of childbirth, nursed her, fed her, and changed her. Watch her grow up, take her first step, and say her first words. You can still remember the day, her first day of school. How pretty she looked in that dress. You remember how she had had how you had to help her with her homework and how she was getting smarter every day. Mm -hmm. 
this was this mother's little girl. But now, what she had, maybe she had a, been sick from time to time, a headache here, a cold there, or flu from time to time. But nothing like this ever before. You see, now she screams and hollers constantly. She can't put new clothes on her because she tears them off. No longer is her hair in those nice cornrows, those extensions or ponytails that you put them in. Strange voices come out of her mouth. She can't eat. She can't sleep. She can't play. She is grievously vexed by a demon. But one thing is constant. Those eyes. You see, there's a strange look in those eyes. Eyes that tell you that this is no ordinary sickness, no ordinary problem, and no ordinary trouble. Can you imagine the helpless feeling of this mother? She is thinking, I'm losing my little girl. Uh -huh. And someone in here this morning knows what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. You see, someone knows how it feels when you're losing your little girl or little boy to the streets, uh -huh. to drug addiction, or a life of crime. Come on, somebody. Amen. It is a helpless feeling. Yes. Because no matter how much you pray, you pray, no matter how much you counsel that child, you're still in a helpless situation. Yes. But I have come to know when you turn it over to Jesus, you're never helpless. Because he is our hope for tomorrow. Yes. He is the hope for our future. Yes. Amen. Amen. But let me say, if, as a mother, not me as a mother, but I know my mother. Hey, Ben. I knew her love. Come on, somebody. A mother will go miles in search of help for her child. A mother's love for her child will travel late at night, on foot, in the cold and in the rain yes. in search of food for that baby. Yes. You see, the mother will go that extra mile and go more miles than she have to for that child. Yes. And I'm sure this mother has been to the doctors and psychiatrists and even with all of their technology, they could not help her dog. That's right. See, she must have gone to the priest and even though he had sprinkled the holy water over her, and even apply two spots of oil on her head, he couldn't help her. She had probably been to the hoodoo voodoo doctor. Even though he took a new leaf from a tall tree in a big forest, even though he mixed it with a new donkey's eye with two pinches of salt and four glows of garlic, he couldn't help her either. So finally, out of money and options, she's about to give up hope. Then one day, the news travels into the village that a man was coming to town. He was not just any man. He was no ordinary man. And yes, this mother had heard about this man. Jesus was his name. And delivering hopeless people was his claim to fame. You see, it was the same Jesus who had met a man whose body was covered with leprosy, and he touched him and made him whole. It was the same Jesus who had met a paralytic man, a man who had not moved his arm or legs for a long time. But Jesus told him to arise, yes. take up your bed, and yes. walk, yes. and he did. It was the same Jesus who had met a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. She just simply touched the hem of his garment, and she was made whole. This same Jesus was coming by her way and she had to see him. For verse 22 tells us that she was so consumed with excitement that she ran out to meet him. You see, church, if you're sick, you need a doctor. Yeah. If, you need, if you have legal problems, you need an attorney. Yeah. If you're having marriage problems, you may need to go see a marriage counselor. Uh -huh. If you're having trouble in school, you might need to find a tutor. Yeah. If you have problems with your pipes, you may need to find a plumber. Yeah. But if your problem today is demon possession and sin, you need to find an emasculator, a liberator, yeah. a demon chaser, yeah. a yoke breaker, a problem solver, a mind fixer, yeah. a hell raiser. Hallelujah. 
I'm here to let you know that you need to go find a man. Go see the man named Jesus Christ. The Bible also tells us in verse 22 that she came and found him and began crying out after him, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Now in the Greek language, the word used here for cry suggests that she kept on crying out. She didn't just do it once. She needed to get Jesus' attention. And so she pled her case to Jesus. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. But in verse 23, we find Jesus doing exactly the opposite of what we think he should do. He does not rush to her aid. He does not agree to follow her home. He does not soothe her heart with words of encouragement. Because the Bible says in verse 23, Jesus did not answer a word. Now, now I must let you know that most Bible commentators suggest that Christ was role-playing for his disciples. He was showing them exactly how unfeeling, heartless, and insensitive the Jews treated the Gentiles. And this may be true, but today, I want to suggest to you also that even though Jesus was trying to teach his disciples a lesson, his main concern, his main priority, and focus, and objective of his Supreme regard was this woman. Yeah. You see, she had heard that this man named Jesus mm -hmm. could do anything. Yeah. Now, when she came to him for help, he was silent. Mm -hmm. It's a hard thing, church, to deal with God's silence. Yeah. You see, you wish that you could go through life thinking that your prayers could be answered right away. Yeah. You wish that everything you asked for, God gave it to you on the spot. Yeah. You wish that when you pray, that God never says, wait. But the truth is, sometimes God says yes, sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says not yet. Yeah. Yeah. But how do you know the difference between a no and a not yet? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see, when God is silent, do you give up on that prayer? Mm -hmm. Do you give up on asking God for direction? Mm -hmm. Do you give up on that lost person you've been praying for? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you give up and walk away and think that you wasted your time? Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the silence of God? Uh -huh. And let me say, sometimes you're going to be crying out in the midnight hour. Uh -huh. And the morning will come, but it ain't going to bring any joy. Oh, can I get a witness in this Amen. Amen. Sometimes you will be praying over something for a long time. Showing up for prayer meeting, getting to church early, and meeting with the prayer warriors. Yeah. Sometimes you will wake up and call that prayer partner before the crack of dawn. Yeah. But yeah. still, God is silent. Yeah. Yeah. All the things that they told you would work, don't work. So let me ask you, do you stop praying? Is that the point when you stop, when you say to yourself, this prayer thing is not working? I can't see any results from this prayer thing. Mm -hmm. I might as well go at it on my own. Mm -hmm. Is that when you begin to figure things out for yourself? Mm -hmm. But verse 23 gives us the answer. It says, this mother yeah. kept on crying out. Yeah. Yeah. See, this mother was persistent in calling on the name of Jesus. Yeah. She knew that if Jesus didn't answer, there would be no answer. Yeah. Yeah. She knew that Jesus, he's our man. Hallelujah. If he can't do it, nobody, nobody can. Yeah. 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 So this mother kept on keeping on. Yeah. Yeah. And if we think about it, the reason some of us are still alive today mm. is because we have mothers yeah. that did not give up on us yeah. and were persistent in praying yeah. for us. Yeah. 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 Our tough times were in the home, in the marriage, in their personal lives, or whatever. The reason why we are still here today is because our mothers did not give up on us. Yeah. And they yeah. prayed for us. Yeah. You see, yeah. we may have acted like a fool in the school, but thank God our mothers didn't give thank up on us. Yeah. We have been, may have been arrested for doing something foolish, but thank God our mothers didn't give up yeah. on us. Yeah. There's a song that says, my mama prayed for me. Yeah. Had me on her mind. Yeah. And took the time to pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I
Thank God that my mother prayed for me. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, saints, there is nothing like a praying mother. You and I need to learn the lesson of persistent praying. Praying that says, Lord, I know that only you can help me. Only you can heal me. Only you can get me through these midnight hours. Only you can get me through this dark tunnel so I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Only you, Lord, can get me through. Yes, you see, some of us have an idea that we'll pray for a while right now. Then we'll try something else later. Come on now. That God, I'll give God a chance to work on this problem. Then it's my turn. Yeah. You see, I'll call on God now. And if it doesn't work, I'll call Sally Sue. Slick Rick, Slick Witty, or Big Mom and Nick. Yeah. But you see, God is trying to let us know that he's not just another solution. He's not just another helper. He's not just another problem solver. But he's the only solution. Yeah. He's the only help. And he is the yeah. only problem solver. Yeah. 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 God may not always change the situation, on, but you better believe God will always be in our situation. Yeah. 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 And he will give us the strength to get us through it. Because in our weakness, Jesus Christ is our strength. Yeah, amen. You see, God is looking for some saints yeah. who will say like Jacob, I won't let go of you, Lord, yeah. until yeah. you bless me. Yeah. Yeah. See, God is looking for some saints who will stand still and see the salvation of God. Yeah. God is looking for that man or woman who will pray on, hold on, and press on. Yeah. Yeah. What we need to do is learn that only persistence in prayer can gain the victory. Mm -hmm. You see, the truth is that if God will not do it, it is not meant to be done. Amen. Amen. See, we need to learn to close the blinds, mm -hmm. shut the door, mm -hmm. get off TikTok, turn off the phone, Amen. get off Facebook, Amen. turn the TV off, and stop calling folks on, and just cry out to the Lord. Come on, son. We need to learn not to stop praying, but to pray on. Yes, yes, yes. And verse 23 also lets us know that when she kept on crying out, mm -hmm. that there were some voices that joined in. Mm -hmm. Now notice, the Bible said that she was crying out to the Lord son of David. Uh -huh. She put an address on her prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. But here comes the disciples. Send her away. Mm -hmm. For she cried out to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see church, <laughs> unless I missed it, uh -huh. the text says she called out to the Lord, son, son of David, Amen. and not any of them. Come on now. How many times has that happened in your life? Mm -hmm. Where you're trying to get someone's attention and someone else becomes a barrier. Yeah, yeah. You see, this woman was probably thinking in her head, what makes you think you can shut me up when I wasn't even talking to you anyway? Yeah. How tragic it, it, it is when you allow people who are not God hamper your connection with God yeah, yeah. by causing you to stop rendering that which has only been intended to be reserved for God alone. You see, he, is alone. he alone is worthy of the, all the honor. He alone is worthy of our praise. He alone is worthy of our worship. And he alone is worthy of our obedience. Yes, yes, yes. Not him and your family. Not him and big mama and them. Not him and other people's opinion. Not him plus your enemies. You're not, you wasn't talking to them in the first place. Sometimes we have to let the enemy know that if you can't heal me, if you can't drop my tears, if you can't help me get through, I'm not talking to you anyway. Right. And if I'm not talking to you, I'm not going to allow you to stop my connection with the one who changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. You see, his name is Jesus Christ. If your name is not Jesus, this is an A and B conversation, and you can see your way out of it. Because I'm calling on the name of Jesus. Now, this woman paid them no mind. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do, my brothers and sisters. Right. With those obstacles, with those interferes, with those haters, right. just move on around right. and keep your focus on Jesus. Right. Because this woman paid them no mind. Yeah. She kept crying out to Jesus. Right. And in your walk with God, 
there are going to be those discouraging voices that ever so often, from time to time, will urge you to give up when you feel like God is not answering your prayers. But I'm here to let you know, just because God has an answer does not mean he is saying no. If he has not answered, it might be he's up to something. Come on, somebody. You see, he may be testing your faith to see how willing you are and your tendencies to trust his heart when you can't see your way. Trust his will when it doesn't make any sense. Walk the path when the directions seem foolish and in disarray. God wants you to know that you can still worship him, bless him, and give to him even when you don't have your answer yet. And the question is, are you patient enough to stay there until God shows you what he has for you? Come on now. And as we look at the story, there's another but. When I love the but God. Because if it's but anybody else, it ain't going to happen. Yes. But when it's but God, yes. you can rest yes. assured it's going to be yeah and amen. Right. And it's going to come to pass. Yes. And in verse 24, Jesus breaks his silence and says to her, I have not sent but to unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, let's get this right. Yeah. First, Jesus, Jesus ignores her. Then, she has to endure the ridicule of the disciples. Mm -hmm. And finally, when Jesus opens his mouth, it is words of discouragement. Yeah. Yeah. I have not been sent here for you kind of folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have more important people to deal with, mm -hmm. the house of Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, it is hard when you feel like God has rejected and abandoned you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even with Jesus, but even with Jesus' response, this mother still had faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She isn't a Jew. She wasn't that day considered an outcast, mm -hmm. a Candanite, <laughs> a Gentile. She wasn't a church baby that went to Sunday school and church every Sunday. Uh -huh. She was an outcast. You see, this woman does not have the right kind of credentials uh -huh. to be in Jesus Christ. Yes. And if truth be told today, none of us have the right credentials. Amen. Either. Amen. We'll tell the truth to shame the devil. But there's something in this verse I would like to point out. Sometimes, while I'm watching television, this really happened in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. this, that was my era. A strange sound would come across my TV. My screen would go black. The program that I was watching would be gone. Uh -huh. But then a message would come up to let me know that everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Nothing is wrong with my TV set. I don't have to adjust my set because it's only a test. Yeah, yeah. And I want to suggest to you those times when you feel rejected and abandoned by God, when all is going wrong in your life, when there are strange sounds in your home, on your job, and in the church, when things get black and dim, don't adjust the set. Don't try to fix it for yourself. It's only a test because the point is that it's being made in verse 24 is God will test our faith. You see, because verse 25 then tells us then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. As the old folks would say, Lord, come see about me. My baby girl is sick. Lord, come see about me. So despite the apparent lack of interest and rejection, it says she worshiped Jesus. She could have left a long time ago, but she worshiped Jesus. She threw herself down before him and worshiped him. So let me ask you, can you worship when things are not going the way you want them to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you worship Jesus in your sickness? Mm -hmm. Can you worship Jesus through your struggles? Yeah. Can you worship Jesus when there's problems all around you? Mm -hmm. Can you worship Jesus in all your storms? Yeah. Yeah. Can you go into your prayer closet, lift up your voice, bow down and worship? Mm -hmm. I mean, can you come to church, lift up holy hands, and worship when all is going wrong. Jesus answered this mother with those famous words in verse 26. 
Jesus said it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Now hold up, wait a minute. Was Jesus calling this woman a dog? This sister came for some help. And he calls her a dog. Her daughter is demon possessed. And he labels her a dog. Now today we say a dog is a man's best friend. But back in Jesus' day, the dog was the most miserable creature on the face of the earth. And for the most part, they were not domesticated. And they were annoying, barking, and howling late at night. But the most striking and disgusting thing was that they would eat almost anything. They would eat from garbage, tear into rotten carcasses of dead and decomposing animals. They were nasty scavengers. But the worst part is, sometimes they went back to eat their own vomit. So if Jesus was calling her this kind of dog, is there a problem? If he calls us this kind of dog, do we have a problem with it? And I want to suggest to all of you that Jesus has every right to call us dogs. You see, if you look back over your life, and I say, you got to look back. Because when none of us born into this world with a cross around our neck and coming out of our mother's womb singing glory, hallelujah. So when you look back over your life, some may have to go way back, and some may have to go back just to yesterday or this morning. But we all have acted like dogs. You see, when we allow sin in our life, it will make us act like dogs. When we feed our minds and sometimes our bodies with almost anything. We have looked at all sorts of detestable things on television. We have listened to all the suggested music telling us who is going to do who is going to do who before who does what. We have looked on the internet at all sorts sorts of pornographic pictures. Some have even paid money to watch sin glorified on the big screen. I knew I was going to get the old man. I knew I was going to get the amen point of things out. But that's how we were. And that's how we lived. We were drug addicts. We were alcoholics. We were everything that the world said that we were. But the worst thing is that even when God deliver us from sin by sending his son to die on the cross for us, we sometimes go back crawling into eat like dogs eating our own vomit. Come on now. Come See, on God now. delivered us from gossiping, but we go back into it. Uh -huh. He gives us power over lying, but we crawl back into it. Yeah. He gives us power over self, but we crawl back into selfishness. So I have no problem today. If Jesus calls me a straight up. But here's the good news. The Greek language in verse 26 lets us know that Jesus doesn't call her a straight dog. He uses a different, he uses a different word to suggest a little dog, a pet dog, a house dog. A word of endearment. And we may look at this as rejection, but to this mother, she sees a glimmer like a hope. In Jesus' word. Because she says in verse 27, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Yeah, yeah. And say to God, don't miss this. You see, the Jews had called the Gentiles stray dogs all the time. But never this kind of dog, a half dog. This mother's faith is saying, you can call me a pet dog, and I'm fine with that. I have no problems with that. But if I am, then I have a master. Yeah, yeah, you see, yeah. I have no problem calling you calling me this type of dog. You see, stray dogs are left on their own to fend for themselves. Yeah, right. They must go digging in here and there to find a bone. They don't know where to find their next meal, but not a house dog. Yes, you see, yes, a house dog yes. has a mess. Yes, right. You see, before I was searching to find happiness in people and things, I thought I had to do it all on my own, but then I find out that I have a mess. You see, young woman, you thought that you needed to go out there in the street to throw yourself at any guy that told you that you look pretty. Uh -huh. You young men, you thought that you needed to go with any girl that said you had it going on. Uh -huh. We were looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, yeah. 
But then we found out we have a master. Yeah. We thought that we needed others to tell us nice things to feel good about ourselves, but now we know we have a master. Yeah. We thought that we needed to go to parties and try to find happiness in a bottle or by getting high, but now we know yeah. we have a master. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I don't need to be keeping up with the Joneses because I have a master. I don't need to be popular in the church because I have a master. I don't need to have things done my way because I have a master. So if Jesus calls me a house dog, come on somebody, I'm all right with that. I have no problem with that. But if I'm a house dog, then you and I have a master. And his name is Jesus Christ. And you and I need to Realize we're worth something, not just because of who we know on this earth, but because who we know in heaven, who sits on the right hand of the Father. You see, this mother knew crumbs are leftovers from a meal. Crumbs are what no one wants. Crumbs are the fragments of a satisfying meal. Crumbs are what you wipe off your mouth. But like this mother, we all should be saying, Lord, all I need is the crumbs. This mother's faith made her recognize that this was no ordinary man, no ordinary prophet, and no ordinary healer. This mother's faith knew Jesus didn't just have some power, but he had all power. And if you don't know him, let me tell you, ask Abraham about his power. How Sarah could not bear children, then came Isaac. Yeah. If you don't know, ask Lazarus how he was dead for four, days, for four days, and Jesus said, get up, and he got up. Yeah. If you don't know, ask me. He healed my body of cancer, yeah. and yeah. I'm still here yeah. after 20 years. Yeah. And if you don't know, now you know I'm talking about Jesus. Y'all know him, don't you? What he did in your life. How he ran resurrected you. How he made you a new person. How he dipped you out of that mirror clay. And now you are called a, a saint instead of a sinner. You see, Jesus' crumbs are better than anyone's meal. Those crumbs alone will satisfy me. Just a morsel from Jesus will give me more than I ever needed. Jesus, just a little touch from Jesus will make me whole. Just a little word from Jesus will soothe my aching soul. Just a little move of his spirit will change my life. Just his crumbs will satisfy me. And I can imagine when this mother got home and saw that her daughter was made whole. She got a praise on her. Amen, Walls. Amen. You see, I don't know what you came in here to do this I came to clap my hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. I came to stomp my feet. Yeah, yeah, and I came yeah. to get my praise on. Yeah, because yeah, I know yeah. what the Lord has done. Yeah, yeah. I know how my mother was used by the Lord to bring me up in the way that I should go. You see, and I thank God that he's still in the business of doing miracles. Yeah, yeah. The church allowed me to break this down because I don't think y'all understand what I'm really saying here. One day, Jesus came down from glory and died on the cross so we could come to faith in him so we could come into the house. Amen. He rose from the grave and the grave could not hold him so we could come to faith in him so we could come in the house. You see, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. He kicked the door of salvation open on his hinges. Of yeah. grace and mercy so that dogs like you and me could come into the house. Yeah. He doesn't just call us straight dogs or no house dogs, but he now calls us sons and daughters of God. Yeah. Heirs of God, joint heirs yeah. with Christ. Yeah. Is there anybody in here that can make some notes? Because you have come to know that you don't need man's leftovers because Jesus has let you in the house. You don't need to worry about the storms of life because Jesus has left you in the house. Hey, somebody, I'm talking about my water when I'm thirsty, my food when I'm hungry, my solution to my problems, my peace in my sorrow, my redeemer when the price had to be paid, my strength when I was weak, my friend when I'm friendless, my shelter from the storm. I'm talking about Jesus, the man above every man, the hope of God. Jehovah Shalit, yes. my rock. Hallelujah. How many of you can testify that 
that he has done enough for you to give him the honor. He has done enough for you to give him the glory. He has done enough for you to give him the praise. You see, sir, I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm glad I tried him for myself. And he's just not all right. He's just not all right. But he is my everything. He healed me from cancer. He made a way for me. He gave me peace in my soul. He gave me a roof over my head. He's my everything. He's my bomb and kill me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be. I know we're celebrating Mother's Day today. Yeah. But if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have any beautiful mothers. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have one man. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. So I bless his name. Thank you, Lord. I lift him up. I glorify him because I know what he did for me. Through my mother, Annie Mae Brown. I know what my mother did for me. And each of you who are still, your mother is still living, you know what your mother did for you. Amen. And let me say, you also know what those alien mothers did. Amen. I praise God. I thank God for everything, every spiritual blessing. And I don't know what you need or where you are today. But if you come to Jesus by faith, God can meet you where you are and help you get what you need. You need to be saved. Come. If you need a mountain moved in your life, come. If you need to be restored to faith and fellowship, come. If you need to see God moving in someone else's life, come. Regardless of what you need today, if you come by faith, if it is in God's will, you can get it. And that's praise team coming. Even if you have solved him for it in the past and received no answer, today might be the day when he says, Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. The doors of the church are open.
state plan just to kind of end this. Oh, yeah. I just want to tell the mothers, the feeling mothers again, happy Mother's Day, amen. amen. And I'm pretty sure that kind of goes to uh, at least somebody should be cooking for you today. Amen. amen. Treating you, getting whatever you need is Mother's Day. Amen. Make sure you get treated nicely. Amen. amen. And I once again, I want to thank all the visitors who came out and those who are visiting from out of town. And the whole purpose of this ministry here at New Life is to strengthen each and every one of our walks with Christ. And we need to know that we're a Bible preaching church. Yeah. We're, we're, we don't preach prosperity here. We don't preach this name. We, put, we preach the word of God. Amen. 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 Because that's what cleanses us. Amen. That's what changes us. That's what puts a pep in our step Amen. and a glide in our stride. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's about the Amen. word, the word that was made flesh. Amen. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, which has, come, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish <coughs> you in every good word and work. Let the children of God say, Amen. Amen.